It has become both a symbol of struggle and the reason for it. One team controls its destiny. The Oregon Ducks. The other has to fight for it. The Stanford Cardinal. Today, the next fateful step must be taken to reach the game's most majestic cathedral, the Rose Bowl. We welcome you to Stanford Stadium. We're on the campus of Stanford University. Big game for the home team, but equally big for the visitors from Eugene, Oregon, as the Ducks have traveled fans well. Not much of a home field edge for the Stanford Cardinal. This is Pac-10 College Football Saturday, presented by Phillips HD. Let's talk a little bit about the importance of this game in a big conference, a conference that's starting to get national recognition as maybe the best. Well, it's no doubt in my mind right now, Barry, the Pac-10 is playing the best football in the country. Explosive teams. Oregon's the hottest team in the country right now. Arizona's got a shot. Stanford, with one more win, becomes bowl eligible. And USC, still pretty good and still mathematically alive this is a great conference top to bottom and in a good conference we're going to see the best offense the Oregon Ducks so far just unstoppable well they have got it going and it starts with the quarterback it starts with Jeremiah Masoli this guy was fifth string last year and became a 10 game starter he makes great decisions he's like a running back out there he's got a strong arm and a cannon if you can see the right throwing lanes and he's a great option player they should put the game he played last week against USC in a time capsule as one of the great performances in the history of the Pac-10 for quarterbacks. This guy is a stud. Let's talk about Stanford. Their offense is a little bit different than Oregon. They want to pound you and pound you and then pound you some more. And they got a running back can do it. Well, they like to run power and they like to do it with Toby Gerhardt. And Toby Gerhardt is the quintessential back to take on a team like Oregon because Oregon's offense will have to watch him pound that defense again and again and again and keep Jeremiah Masoli off the field. He's a leading rusher in the Pac-10 for a reason, and the Pac-10 has got a lot of great backs. They do have a lot of great backs. Toby Gerhardt is one of them, but you know what? Pretty good running back on the other side of the field today, too, for the Oregon Ducks. With more on that, here's the third member of our broadcast team, Rebecca Harlow. Rebecca. Yes, that's right, Barry. Over the course of the last month, Oregon's and Michael James has exploded onto the national scene, putting up career numbers week after week after week. If you check this out, he's got 152, 154, and 183 rush yards against SC last week, of course. Now, I spoke to him, asked him, what is the key to your success? And he said, Jeremiah Masoli is so comfortable out there that he makes me comfortable. But at the end of the day, my goal is to just win the day this is one kid who is hungry and humble barry very much like his own team humble hungry they want more coming off their most significant victory maybe ever last week against usc they don't want to get off the gas here coach harbaugh you say that this is the best tempo you faced in this oregon offense how do you slow these guys down how do i see them they're a great football team we have to play our best football game of the year thanks coach. Thank you. All right, thanks very much, Rebecca. Jim Harbaugh, uh, very chatty, feels that his football team, when we talked to him yesterday, coming off its best half, the first half in their last game against ASU. Chip Kelly, uh, boy, the last time we saw him, he was lower than a snake. Lost the game to Boise State. Had to sit his best player, arguably his best player, for the remainder of the season. A tough decision. Look at him now, Pete. Well, they have got it in the right direction and he was calm he knew that they had a very difficult task going to Boise he knew that it did not end up well for him that was his first time ever as a head coach but look what he's done with his football team he's focused these young gentlemen he's got them going in the right direction and they are right now as we said in the open the hottest team in football with one of the most explosive offense that we've ever seen here it comes forward drives this one and Lucy will have a chance comes up takes it at the six yard line Got a little bit of a gap to the 30, 35 to the 40. Look out, midfield. Gonna be a race. He's at the 30 to the 20. Caught from behind and dropped at the 15-yard line. But you could not draw it up better for a start of a game if you were Jim Harden. Well, the lane was there for Owusu, and all he had to do was use his extraordinary speed and accelerate through the holes. Great job by the Stanford kickoff return team staying on their blocks knowing that Owusu could take advantage of that hole and just tripped up 
at the very end of the play, saving the touchdown is Terrell Irvin. So Andrew Luck will lead the Cardinal, starting at the 16-yard line of the Oregon Ducks. Gerhardt, the tailback, wailing in motion. And this is Gerhardt, right up the middle, moves the pile a little bit, picks up about four, as we said, a guy who seems to be getting better every week. First down yardage, I believe, a real key in this game. If Stanford can get four yards, as it did on that series, that just opens up everything, because Luck, very efficient off the play action. Barry, that's the key to their entire offense. They're going to run power. They're going to get behind their great fullback, Owen Marisic, and they are going to challenge Oregon physically. Second down and six. Play fake this time. Luck runs right into traffic. Had unloaded early. Almost picked. Defensively for Stanford, presented by, or rather offensively, presented by Phillips. You saw the offensive line. Here are the skilled people. Owen Maurice, we've been talking about him all year. And he is a guy, if he gets a hat on you, he doesn't let you go. He's got great hips and great ability. He does it all for this Stanford offense. Really one of the most unsung players in the country. And Luck just rolled right in to the oncoming defensive player for Oregon. That's it. There's a drop play with Gebhardt. That can do it. He'll stop for a loss. Very good defensive series for Nick Aliotti's Stanford uh, Oregon defense. I'll say. Whitaker will come on to try a 29-yard field goal. He'll get Stanford on the board first. Just a minute and a half into the ball game. It is on its way, and it is good. Not by much, but he'll take Stanford's very disciplined team, and they're very disciplined in the way they go about all their business, especially the return game. And you see, Owusu's the one with the speed and the acceleration and confidence with the football, but it's really the blocks. Jim Dre, Cleaners out there, Amba Joy's out there doing a great job. Will Powers, those guys holding blocks, driving forward, keeping their legs under them, not falling down in a situation like Stanford. Tenth in the Pac-10 in red zone offense. Their team through the first three games, also against Purdue and also against Utah. And then the offense started going. They are the number one red zone defense in the Pac-10, the Ducks are. Kick is a short end of a red kick. It's going to be Barner at the eight-yard line. He gets a little gap and then closes down as he crosses the 30-yard offensively for the Oregon Ducks. It's a very young team, and you can see along the offensive line, no seniors on that offensive line. And the backs and receivers, only the one senior, Ed Dixon. I think he's going to be a key player in this game. There's your quarterback, Jeremiah Masoli, and Masoli is, and you, you mentioned earlier, the straw that stirs the drink. As he goes, so go the Ducks. So Lick, quick pass. Catch is made by Mayo. Converts the punt immediately and drops right at the line of scrimmage. Several Stanford players around him. Masoli, 18 touchdown runs, 19 touchdown passes. Great balance. Got a cannon arm and has just made all the right decisions in the last few weeks. And he's a great leader. You heard Rebecca talking about it in the open. Really keeps it loose, really keeps these guys entertained and keeps them having fun in this fast break offense. Here's James, comes off the wing this time. James trying to get to the outside, can't do it. Nice play by Bill McNally. Pick up of only about a yard. What Stanford is trying to do defensively, P, and Ron Lynn, the defensive coordinator, was talking to us about this, they don't want to cross the line of scrimmage on defense. They want to wait. They saw USC make that mistake. Ends crashing up, leaving giant yawning holes for LaMichael James and Masoli to run through. Stanford doing a good job right now, hanging out at the line of scrimmage and running to the ball. Right now, Oregon not running that hurry up. They go empty as they bring James out. Masoli straight back to pass as all day. Throws over the middle for Dixon. He can play. Long count. Line drive kick, short kick. Takes a big hop. Up there immediately is Terrell. Fine defensive play that time by Barnum. Coach and then die. That's a football <laughs> coach. <laughs> He's a football man and just an inspirational guy to be around. And you can tell how much his players love him and how much they've responded to him. Look what they've done in his tenure at Stanford. Oh, and what he's done. It's just unbelievable. First down, Cardinal at the 25-yard line out of the I formation. Play fake. Luke, uh, Luck is going to go up on first down. Throws deep, and that's going to be an affair. He's in the secondary that they've had to overcome. Ryan Whalen, a very under-control receiver. Picks his shoulder That's and an just appearance. tries to take out Lewis. On the defense, number 14. 15-yard penalty, automatic first down. First down at the 40-yard line. There's the give to Gebhardt. Gebhardt tries to bounce it outside and almost did. 
picked up about four, and that is going to move him over the 1,000-yard mark. Toby Gerhardt, over 1,000 yards. He's the Pac-10's leading rusher ahead of Jacquez Rogers and Javed Pest, who we have coming up in the next game. California State leading rusher in the high school history of this fine state, one of the great running backs in the history of the state. Pretty impressive. Morgan shows blitz this time. They pick it up. Lux pass is caught by Will for a first down. Well, you mentioned the savviness of Ryan Whalen. He recognizes the bail coverage there and runs a nice short route, finds the place inside the zone, and for a, true, for a redshirt freshman, Andrew Lump recognizes really right away. communication, especially for a redshirt freshman quarterback, a first-year guy. Stephon Taylor in a tailback now for Stanford. And this is Taylor. Taylor hit by the first man through a pickup of about two, T.J. Yes, well, Barry, what's interesting about this start is it's exactly what Stanford expected. We talked to Harbaugh yesterday, and he said, I've never seen our team intimidated. In fact, there's definitely no fear around the locker room. There's a, there's a feeling that this is an opportunity for us to step it up in the Pac-10. They're certainly starting off that way, guys. Well, a huge game for them, of course. They got the five wins. They need one more to be bowl eligible, and it's not an easy road. Marisa goes in motion, power formation, play fake. Luck going to go up, unloads deep. He's got a man out there, and he overthrew the intended receiver, who was Kobe Fleener, a tight end. This time they go out of the gun. Whalen, it's Griff Whalen in motion. Here's a blitz off the edge. It's picked up, Luck steps up, throws. Whalen makes the catch, first down, Cartman. Another perfectly executed play. Well, look at the Whalen boys. You see the little pick play there. That's Griff Whalen, and Ryan Whalen comes right above that and finds another soft hole inside that Oregon zone. Out of the gun once again. And the give is to Gerhardt. Gerhardt doesn't get much this time. He's then caught to go with two tight ends, two wide outs. Again, the Ducks show blitz. And again, they come with it. Again, it's picked up, and the pass is caught by Arusu inside the five-yard line, down to the two-yard line. Again, finding a hole in the zone. Great blitz pick up by Toby Gerhardt. And Luck just delivers that ball with great confidence, steps into the throw. First and goal at the two-yard line. Give it to Maurice at the fullback, and he's going to be a little short. Shows up on film just watching him. He does everything correctly. It's true. So get down there close to the goal line. You want to reward him a little bit. I Why think this one will go to Toby. Got a half yard to go. This is Gerhardt. He's close. Touchdown. There's Maurice getting a nice block on the hip with the defender, getting a little push, and that's all Toby. So far, needs. it's just as they draw it up. Driving the line is up, and it is good. And the 749 play here in the first quarter. Stanford has taken a 10 to nothing lead, and guess what, folks? That lead is the biggest first quarter deficit for Oregon this year. Warner at the one yard line. Trying to get to the other side of the field. He's got no place to go. A flag is down. So is Barner at right about the 14 yard line. So on the return team, block below the waist, number 43, half the distance to the goal, first down. Chris Simmons also not the ball game. He is out for the day. The give this time on a reverse is to Holland. And Holland's got some room all the way out past the 25 yard line of the 27. For these Oregon Ducks, I believe they had eight plays of 20 yards or more against USC last week. That's a very simple end-around play with Holland coming around. One of the fastest guys in the country playing any position. Great track run. Morgan going to the hurry up now. Pass over the middle drop by Holland. Right to transfer from USC to Oregon. Inside the Pac-10 transfers don't happen all the time. He's done the line the tight end up in the backfield. And now they throw to him. This is Dixon at the 30-yard line. Trying to turn it upfield. He's going to get about five. We're going to look at the action in the backfield with Jeremiah Masoli. Just so calm in the backfield, so confident with what he's doing. And flips it out to Ed Dixon. A nice little play by Chip Kelly's team, getting Dixon involved and getting a nice gain on second down. Now they're dealing with third and short. Yeah, that's a very different look than we've seen from these Oregon Ducks. I got a lot of wrinkles. Third down and two. And they give this time to James. And James squirms out of the tackle, gets the first down right about the 40-yard line. So first down at the 40-yard line. And they give right up the gut, and this is James, and he is gone. Just like that, the Oregon Ducks have scored 60 yards. And there's nobody home. Well, it's like the parting of the sea right there, a great seal. Mark Asper doing a great job just blocking out, and then on the inside, Jordan Holmes... Two great blocks, and Michael James is way too fast to give a hole like that to. Nobody 
playing deep, nobody helping out to take on Michael James and he takes him right down the field vertical in a hurry. Five plays, 93 yards to go all of a minute and seven seconds, and just like that, it's a three-point game. A flag side on the defense. Penalty is declined. Try is good. They do a great job of sticking to their identity and it's better for them when they have the lead to do that so they can continue to run the ball and run the clock. Stanford 13th in the nation in time of possession, so this is nothing new for them. Like, and especially against this Oregon team, they want to take the air out of the game. You can see Stanford's won 20 plays. Oregon 8, and yeah, it's a 3 fourth ball game right now. Oregon can strike quickly. Big play here, third down and 10. And they give it to Gerard. Gerard taking people with him down to the 5-yard line. It'll be close. Right over Casey Matthews, and this is just sheer one-two. We call Toby Gerhardt a one-stop shot because he blocks, he can catch a ball, and he can do this for you. You see the hole open up, and he takes it there. He knows he doesn't have enough for the first down there until he steps right on the numbers of Casey Matthews, runs right over him, one of the best defenders on the Oregon D, and gets the first down because he wanted it more. Ducks do not have an answer for him so far. 11 carries, 56 yards. In the I formation, first down at the five-yard line, Gerhardt again. Tried to bounce it outside that time, a step from getting in, but a nice tackle that time defensively by Talmadge Jackson. Stanford's going to go with its power package now as they bring an extra offensive lineman, James McGillicuddy, comes into the game. And this is a real power formation here. Now they're going to dray out of the backfield. Give it to Gerhardt. Gerhardt trying to cut it inside. Still on his feet, close to the end zone. Touchdown, Cardinal. This is the place to see it. Toby Gerhardt getting behind his offensive line. Owen Marisic again. Andrew Phillips pulling around. Everybody on the same page. Everybody churning their legs. Everybody driving their feet. And Oregon right now, they're kind of a runaround defense, kind of a, a blitzing defense. They don't have an answer for what Stanford's doing. Not so far. And that should make the job that much easier for Andrew Luck. See Marisic trying to find his way through. Phillips trying to find his way through. Toby does a great job getting behind those two blockers. The other thing on that last play, Owen Marisic, and you talked about this, he not only gets on a guy, he doesn't get off the guy. He moved Javis Lewis that time four yards into the end zone. It's leg drive, it's positioning, and it's desire. Here's Barner comes up, takes this at about the seven-yard line. They want to keep this side of the field. It's apparent. He brings it back to about the 30. Pretty good return. Now Jeremiah Masoli will take over. You know, there's all that talk, of course, about the Heisman Trophy. Every year is the Heisman Trophy. And here's Tim Tebow, was the winner of the Heisman Trophy. But look at his numbers when compared to Jeremiah Masoli, and they're very favorable. Well, Jeremiah Masoli has just as much command of this Ducks offense as Tim Tebow has at Florida. Tim Tebow is a legendary football player and one of the greats of all time in college football. But you look at the numbers of what Masoli's been able to do, very comparable. This comparison is brought to you by Days In. Here's Barner. And Barner gets a little bit of an angle and gets it going in the right direction across the 35, about the 36, and gain of six. They did have the nice touchdown run from Michael James, but the angles we're seeing from the Oregon offense so far in this game are not the sharp exploded angles exploitive angles that we saw against USC Stanford doing a much better job staying at the line of scrimmage and playing assignment football quick toss this time to Mail and Mail gets a step he's got a first down and more oh, and you don't want them to get into rhythm they are a rhythm offense and once Masoli starts to feel comfortable look out it's time to give to Michael James, and it gets out of the first tackle, but Stanford scrambles and stops him for a loss of about a yard on the play. He's tough, though. Nick Macaluso starting for Clinton Snyder. Second down, 11. This is Masoli, and a quick toss to Dixon. He forgot to take the ball away. And this time, they bring two and a slot to the near side. Masoli runs up, might be checking off here. He flops James to his right side. And I think they got a freebie. Somebody jumped over the middle. The pass is almost intercepted. Thrown a little bit short. Offsides, defense number 93. Five yard penalty. Main third down. Play one on time down. Stanford defensive coordinator we discussed this there's a lot of thinking and a lot of decisiveness that has to go on on the defensive side of the ball 
when you're playing against Oregon. You have to know your assignment. And with the flop of the tailback, I think the Stanford D got a little confused and jumped outside. And he heard the referee say they're going to play an untimed down here. Soli with time. Now he steps up here, run. And now he throws to James, and James cannot hang on. Incomplete. And, uh, Stanford. 128 yards of offense. Oregon still at 104, but remember, 60 of them came on that one touchdown run by LaMichael James. Gerhardt, a couple of touchdowns, 60 yards on the ground. Pretty good. Well, Stanford's got 17 points right now, and they got it in the first quarter, and that is a statement in itself. Oregon only has given up 23 first quarter points all year. You see it right there. And Toby Gerhardt's making a statement right now for Pac-10 Player of the Year. Masoli, Quiz Rogers, Job and Best, they're all in the running. But Toby really showing out against the team we all believe was DCS bound. There he is again. Right side, now he steps inside, stays on his feet, great balance across the 20 to about the 21-yard line. Javis Lewis makes a shoestring tackle. Barry, you just think about all the great backs that are in the Bay Area this afternoon in college football. Toby Gerhardt, Michael James, yep. Shane Vereen, Javid Best, Jacquez Rogers, his brother James, Jeremiah Masoli, a great runner in his own right. This is wild. Oh, it's great. Play fake, not gonna go up. Blitz is picked up, but throws over the middle. Arusu has it. 38 yard line of the Oregon Ducks. A gain of What a beautiful throw by Locke dropping it in. Awusu putting his head down and using that speed. Talmadge Jackson, the third, right on top of it. All right, let's talk about the fearless predictions presented by Phillips HD. What Awusu has is speed and the acceleration. We've seen it a couple times in this game already. We saw the return to start out the game, and he has improved his hands so far in this football game, making two beautiful catches way downfield. Two catches for 65 yards, plus he's got 125 yards of kick return so far. Look out. Left throws right open. Catch is made by Dre. First down, Stanford Luck took a shot. He's involved. He's trying to get the ball to Rulin. He's got it to Cleaner. Got it to Jim Dre. Really takes a big hit from Michael Clay, but that ball, you can't deliver it any better. Kind of statement game for Toby Gerhardt. Statement game being made by the young quarterback. Also, no doubt. I'm out. Stanford. That's their second charge timeout. Gerhardt, not this time. Stopped in the backfield by T.J. Ward to fill that gap nice. They're happy to have T.J. Ward back for Oregon. Missed five games with an ankle injury early in the season. Leading tackler last year, kind of came out of nowhere last year and started making a whole bunch of plays. Very good, strong safety. And a very good tackle. Out of the gun this time. Give it to Gerhardt again. Gerhardt right up the gut. Gets an inside the 10 to about the 7 yard line. He's at the 8 yard line. Third down and 6. They go out of the gun. And this time they play fake. Luck looks to the end zone. Got a man. Dre. Touchdown Stanford. And a late flag comes in. This kid's got size. The passer, strength. Number 2 on the defense. That penalty will be enforced on the ensuing kickoff. It's rough in the That's passer on T.J. Ward. I mean, size, strength, accuracy, touch. Plus, he runs when necessary. He can really fire his legs. You see the ability to fake in the backfield. And a great catch that time by Jim Dre. But again, a perfectly delivered by Andrew Luck. Good coverage by John Boyette. You know, the other thing about that, we, we spoke about this earlier, and we were talking to the coaching staff about it, throwing Cross is tough, 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 tough to do. Well, he can do it just because he has such great fundamentals. That's the roughing the passer. Not, not a huge hit, but through the flag. Yeah, we've seen them do this. We saw them come out in the first half against Arizona State with a similar purpose. But to do it against this Oregon team, which is the hottest, no argument, they are the hottest college football team in America. After that giant win over USC, Oregon coming down here riding a wave of success. And they have really run into a fundamentally disciplined, sound football team in Stanton. Great field position here. Guys, welcome to the Jeremiah Masoli tailgate and Army. I spoke to him earlier this week, and he said, I have over 500 people coming to the game.
game, and I love the support. This entire section up here is dedicated to Jeremiah. It is one group that is saying, hey, Oregon can fight right back into this game. There's lots of love, lots of support, and the family is just happy to be along for the ride, guys. All right, thanks very much. Not just the Masoli family that uh, is here in force. Oregon Rooters here in force. As you look around this stadium, P, I'd say, what, a third of the stadium is clad in yellow and green. Well, they've ridden that wave of success all the way down to the farm. Yeah. Really nice to see a team that travels a crowd. Five-yard line, first down. Not as bad as it could have been. Would have been at the 40-yard line, but for that penalty. So Masoli will start at the 25. And throw, and he does. And able to slip the tackle that time was Lavoisier Tuane. Not going between the tackles quite as much. And here's Masoli up the middle. And that time he had a gap, and look out. Masoli midfield the 45 yard. Watch Masoli. All the action is going to be going to the right, and Masoli is going to just stay in one place. And this is what makes him so dangerous his ability to just stay there and wait for everything to open up. Quick screen this time to Davis, and Davis knocked out of bounds after a game in a rhythm. Then Chip Kelly really goes for the throat with the hurry up offense and they can go faster than anybody in the country because they practice faster than anybody in the country. The tempo is unbelievable. Ball at the 41 yard line of the Cardinal. And this is Masoli. Now he throws outside and a catch is made by Tuane and Tuane is going to be close to a first down. Trips left this time. Masoli now he looks downfield throws up the middle got a man Dixon first down at the 20 down to the 15-yard line ball popped loose but let's see officials are saying we still have a signal now they're saying Stanford Chris Evans with the tackle and the fumble recovery Dixon doing a great job of showing when Masoli finds him right in the middle of the field Dixon fighting for more yards and that's just a great play absolutely that great individual defensive play by Chris Evans, and Oregon had gotten a rhythm on offense, and it just stopped. Just like that. Now the Cardinal has it once again. Big break for Stanford. Give it to Garrett. Garrett's got a gap. Garrett lost the football. Ball's loose, picked up by Oregon. Give it and take it. Toby Gerhardt mortified at the fumble. He is not a back that gives it up a lot. Makes a nice cut, and that's just... A really good tackle by T.J. Ward. Put his helmet right on the ball, and sometimes as a running back, there's nothing you can do about that. That's great defense overcoming good off. Boise loss was 19-8, to and Oregon hasn't been jumped on like this since losing at USC on October 4th, 2008. This is a, this is a tough spot for them. This is Masoli this time. Fakes, steps up, throws to the end zone. Wide open, mail, touchdown. 29 yards, just like that. I'd keep my seatbelt buckled if I were you. I think this one's going to be a bumpy ride. Everybody caught the fake, and Masoli was able to get outside and find Jeff Mayo deep in the end zone. Let's see if he hung on to the ball all the way through because his momentum took him out of the end zone. He is wobbling it a little bit. Did he have it secured there? He's wearing white shoes, and the back of the end zone line is white. That's really interesting to look at here. They are going to take a look. It's going to be a tough one to overturn. Let's take a look again. There you see him bobbling the ball, and then he brings in his left hand to secure it. But is that toe out of bounds there? That look wide open now. And you see what Masoli can do throwing the football when he has a clear path to throw it. Jeremiah Masoli, not the tallest player on the field, certainly for a quarterback, only five foot eleven, delivers that ball very well to Mail. And Mail has possession there, but very difficult to tell. It reminds me of that one three-point shot back in the 80s that Kevin McHale made. <laughs> Couldn't tell where his shoes were on the three-point line. White shoes, white line. That's tough. That is tough. There well, that's, that's right there. That's a tough one. Very tough. I mean, if I had to guess, I'd say that he's out. Touchdown. And it does stand. It is a touchdown. So they say Mail did get the foot down. I think that was the right thing to see do. that blue sleeve incidentally being worn by the officials in this game and all over the Pac-10 conference today that is for prostate cancer awareness and it's 
way, and it is good, and it is a 24 to 14 ball game now. And a beautiful look at Hoover Tower overlooking the Stanford campus, and uh, he so far this ball game might well be played in track shoes rather than football. Well, you look at it, 585 all-purpose yards, 38 points in 20 minutes. Here comes a Wusu out of the end zone. At the 15 to 20, that's on a little late getting to the gap. This time, right up the middle, and nothing doing. Well, you look at Casey Matthews. He's had some trouble in this game corralling Toby Gerhardt, but he is the undisputed leader of this defense. Very productive all year, 51 tackles, and a very sure tackler. And, of course, famous USC football family. Dad, uncle, two brothers. The guys are all balling out. <laughs> I mean, That's right. Great, great family of, of football players. Out of the gun this time. Luck straight back, has time, flag down. Here's a call. Offsides, defense, five-yard penalty, remains second down. Interesting to see how Oregon plays the rest of this game. Barry, you referred to it earlier, the young Ducks. Only five of Oregon's 44 players on the two deep are seniors. These guys have to mature in a hurry and come back here. Play fake, and Luck is going to run. Luck's going to have the first down across the 45 the 47 yard line and that's borrowing a little something from the Oregon player for a wrencher freshman and this guy has the entire package just like Toby Gerhardt does just great action and of course all eyes are always on Toby Gerhardt for what he can do and, and that that really does look like Oregon you see the ball yeah. not moving at all and, and you see that sometimes when you watch enough, enough tape on a team you might just borrow a little something from him, and it looks like Jim Harbaugh did it right now. Work for first down, ball at the 46-yard line. Gerhardt again, right up the gut, gets a little gap, gets it down to the 45-yard line, and pick up a nine. Because if he does that, he's going to get hurt by the Stanford tight ends and the play action that Andrew Luck is able to run. Well, that's exactly right. I mean, the same issues that befall Stanford are befalling Oregon now. Stanford kind of taking what's there. This time to give the fullback the first down. And he's a pre-med major. Oh, by the way. <laughs> and he's cracked three helmets this year. That's right. Just some great stories on both sides of the ball. This is this is turning out to be a great Pac-10 football game thus far. Absolutely. Lux straight back on first down. Steps up. Going to throw. Looking for Waylon. I believe he got it. At the two-yard line. What a catch. But you see it right there at the top of your screen. Waylon taking off right down the numbers. And, and that ball is just... Put it there. It's not like Wayland didn't even see it. It's just will by Andrew Luck, the freshman, that that ball be cut. Great coverage by Calvin Jackson, the third. How do you tell the cover him any better? Couldn't have done it any better. First and goal at the three. Gerhard stopped it about the two yard. Second and goal, the ball just about the two yard line. Give it to Marisic. And Marisic fights for the end zone. He's close. Touchdown, Cardinal. <laughs> in the short yardage package for the Cardinal. A heavy dose of Owen Marisa carrying the ball on third and ones and near the goal line. A great job of Marisa taking a page out of Toby Gerhardt's book, keeping his legs going and getting right up into the line of scrimmage. Try for point by Whitaker is up and good and it is a 31 to 14 Stanford lead. coverage by Johnson Batamosi. And with 27 seconds left, Stanford will get a chance to touch the football again. You have to really be impressed with Stanford's defense, especially since this Oregon team, now they did have a bye week, an extra week to prepare, but this Oregon team has got to be the most difficult team to prepare for in the country because of the tempo, the speed that they play at, the unique ability of their offense. You just can't simulate it with your scout team in practice. It's very difficult to do. Now, Jim Harbaugh really did give a lot of effort in simulating it, and it looks like it's paying off right now. Well, he did. He had a defensive back, Michael Thomas, who was a high school quarterback, very fast, run the scout team. This is Terrell. Terrell starts up the middle, gets a little gap to about the 38-yard line, 17 seconds remain. And very good special teams thus far in this game, and Chip Kelly told us that these are the two best special teams playing teams in the Pac-10. Give it to Gerhardt. Gerhardt can be stopped at the 40-yard line, gain of three. That likely will be the last play of the first half, and it will be, and I have to remember for 
Stanford Cardinal fans. Coach, Andrew Luck has been able to find soft holes all over the field. Your team always bounces back, but what do you want to see differently from your defense? We've got to generate some pressure on him and not let him sit back there, but he's a really good quarterback. We can't let him sit back there and throw the ball. Thanks, Coach. Andrew Luck has really had a coming out party, and Toby Gerhardt has stabilized this Stanford offense like he has all season. 110 rushing yards so far, and we've only seen a half. He's over 1,000 now, and you look at what he's done in the record books in the history of Stanford football. Just a fantastic we play. Take a look at the BCS rankings. They're taking a beating today. Well, Florida is Florida, and we'll see them play a little later. Texas has got it going. Alabama right now in trouble, and LSU is still alive for the BCS championship in the SEC. Finally, it all caught up to Iowa. It is just a wild year, and right now, the Oregon Ducks are really in a pickle. They have to find a way to find the rhythm offensively and get some points on the board and stop Stanford. Here is the kickoff, and again, they drive it into the corner to Barker. That is by design. Starts to go cross field, and is going to be stopped. Almost slipped out of that tackle. Oregon's possessions, as you can see, they were three and out in their first possession. Then that 60-yard touchdown run, that got things started. They had a one-play 29-yard drive following a Stanford fumble of a touchdown pass to Mail, and then punt, punt. Not very Oregon-like. Start the second half, their own 14-yard line. Give is to Michael James. He tries to cut it back and stepped out of one tackle, but not the second. They've got to find their own balance between the Soli and the Michael James. Soli going to throw, and this is caught by Tuane. Tuane slips one man, and then is cracked short of the first down at about the 23 yard line. Lavoisier Tuane, just a sophomore, really coming on for the Ducks. Of course, his father, Van Tuane, played D line four NFL seasons. He's really coming on, playing well out of Golden West Junior College. And it is James, and James pops it again to the 35-yard line and stopped this time by Delano Howell. That was the same play that went 60 for a score, but a big first down across the 35 and the 36 for the Ducks. So it doesn't take a lot of space for LaMichael James to take off, and the hole was there because Shane Stove a little late closing down, just a true freshman. This time is going to throw over the middle. Dixon makes the catch. Midfield, 45, taking people with him inside the Stanford 40-yard line. Bo McNally finally wrestles into the ground. This is what Oregon can do. I mean, they pick up yards in a hurry. Give this time to James. Not this time. He's stopped by Chase Thomas. Second down and 10. So they're going to throw again. Looks downfield, going for it all. Holland is out there. Touchdown, Ducks. 40 yards, just like that. Took him two minutes and 14 seconds. The Stanford safety's caught out of position. Bo McNally was in no man's land, and Jameer Holland way too fast. It's down the field in a hurry, and Masoli, nice throwing lane to find him. And you see Masoli rolling out a throw to Jeff Nail in the first half on a similar rollout play in that sun drench end zone finds Jameer Hall. Drive for point is up and good and it did not take long. This is back to a 10-point ball game. Due to time constraints, we move ahead to further action right after this message. Welcome back. Oregon now trails by 10. They have the ball again coming off a very successful first possession of the second half. Well, they just came out of the locker room with authority. Tuane with a nice run and catch. Dixon found in the middle of the field by Masoli, and then Masoli getting real deep in the back of the end zone. Had a throw like that to Mail in the first half. That one went to Jameer Holland. And this Stanford defense, you just get the feeling they've been hanging on, hanging on, and their grip starting to slip a little bit. You saw those Quiznos stats, and Sure, there's a little apprehension on the Stanford sideline right now. This is James. James cut back, dropped after a gain of about five. Now they go hurry up here, right to the line of scrimmage, second down and five. They're on a roll, and they know it. This time, Masoli on the keep. Masoli looked to pitch, and will pick up close to a first down. Delano Howell on the stop. And what you're starting to see, Barry, is the space. The space is being created. 
You have those big wide hash marks in the college game, wonderfully conducive to a spread offense. And Chip Kelly, I, I really believe, is an offensive genius. And he's starting to be able to exploit the Stanford B, starting to create the space and starting to dictate pace. First down, the solely rolls right, gonna throw, does, and it's incomplete behind the intended receiver, DJ Davis. There is one deficiency on this Oregon offense as far as personnel goes. They just don't have the game-breaking receivers that we've seen them have in the past. Jameer Holland has been a project for them, and he's doing some good things. Touchdown catch in this game, touchdown catch last week against the USC. There you see D.J. Davis out of Denver, Colorado. Two and A's coming on a little bit. Jeff Mail, a long strider. He's their guy, their go-to. This is James again, not this time. Well played, turned inside that time. They bring Holland to the near side. Holland just scored the touchdown in the last series, and they slot the tight end, Dixon. That could be a difficult assignment for Stanford. And we're going to get a flag. By the snap. False start. Offense, number 59. Five-yard penalty. Remains third down. Well, they said number 59, but it is number 69. Both ran. You see him right there getting into his pass set a little early. Michael Thomas still in the game. So third down and 14 now. Masoli straight back. Now he rolls to his right. Now he throws downfield, and the flag is down. It's Richard Sherman on Jeff Mail, and it looked like Mail grabbed him and pulled him. And it is, it's gonna go against Oregon. That's an appearance. Offense, number 23. 15-yard penalty, main third down. Mail just kind of waved Sherman by. Half the distance to the goal. Now, why wouldn't Stanford refuse this penalty? It's fourth and 14 if they refuse it. I think he caught the ball. Oh, he caught the ball, okay, I'll give it that. Soli throws for Holland, and he can't hang on. Good coverage that time by Johnson Badalosi. Line drive, end over end kick, takes a big hop. Terrell will just let it go, and it does take an Oregon roll. And this time, movement by Marisic. Part of the snap, ball start, 48, offense, five yard penalty, remains first down. Shouldn't happen. So first to 15 now for the car. No luck. Give it to Gerhardt. Gerhardt's got a gap. Gerhardt, 45, midfield to the 45 of Oregon, the 40, 35, out of bounds to the 30-yard line. Huge play. Well, Owen Marisa goes back to doing something right, walling off on the right edge, and then Toby Gerhardt making the cut inside, underneath the guard, Andrew Phillips. And you see his ability to jump outside. He can do it, and he can get to the sideline pretty quickly. Again, a nice cut inside. Andrew Phillips with a good block on Spencer Pacinger and Toby Gerhardt using the straight arm to get a few more yards. Big run for the Cardinal. Gain of 31, Stanford has it at the 31 of Oregon. Play fake, Luck gonna go up on first down, looking for it all, looking for a Russo. he's got it! Touchdown, Cardinal! Especially the ball way downfield to these receivers, willing it into their hands, willing catches. Chris Owusu didn't look like he expected this ball to come. His head, the ball was halfway there, and his head was not turned to Andrew Luck. He turns at the last second, looks up, and the ball's in his hands. And again, good coverage by Talmadge Jackson, but a better throw and a better catch. Absolutely. I mean, you couldn't ask him more of the defender, Jackson. Try for point by Whitaker is up and catch it. going to hit him in the head. What a throw by Andrew Luck, and great adjustment by Owusu. And again, what do you tell Talmadge Jackson the third? He was right in position, just couldn't make the play because the throw was too good. Not twice now that's happened to him. Here's that kick into the corner again. Barner about a yard deep. He's going to come out. The 10 to 15. Drop again, short of the 20 yard line. And Oregon is still in a good position in this football game with the way they can play offense. And they're still in a good position in the Pac 10, even if they go on to lose this game because they don't have any Pac 10 losses. There's a give to James. James coming on big loop gets it up across the 25 to the 26 a gain of eight Chiki Amajoy makes the stop last week remember against USC 613 yards of offense 
and the numbers today are not embarrassing. They've got 300 yards. That's a lot, 298 yards, but not nearly good enough so far. Here's Masoli on the keep, trying to kick it outside, get around Sherman, and he does and gets it up to about the 39 yard line before running out of bounds. Chip Kelly knows he's gonna have to do it. He told Rebecca going into halftime that Andrew Luck was a great player and was gonna be tough to stop. And right now, between Gerhardt and Luck, Oregon's having trouble, but they gotta keep the foot on the gas offensively, keep their tempo going, because they're not out of this game. No, not by any means. So look at the throw this time. Over the middle, Dixon threw it behind him. Dixon was open. That's the play that just killed California, and that game, according to Chip Kelly and the coaching staff at Oregon, that was the, the game that really crystallized this Oregon offense. Well, in 2007, we saw Oregon with a terrible injury to Dennis Dixon in Arizona collapse at the end of the year when they were in the driver's seat. But this year, they, they don't have any Pac-10 losses like they did in 2007. They had that early loss to Cal. Now third down and long again. James now over the 100-yard mark. Fourth week in a row for him. 107 yards. The blitz comes. And Masoli throws the screen. Perfect play. Here's James. 45 midfield. 45-40. On his feet. It's going to be a foot race. 25 to the 20. To the 10. And knocked out of bounds at the three-yard line by Michael Thomas. That was the perfect play at the perfect well, Shane Scove, the freshman, really took off for Masoli. Masoli really got Scove to commit and then was able to dump it beautifully to LaMichael James. And watch the acceleration by LaMichael James just flying through the hole, through the seam, breaking the tackle of Delano Howe. Almost taking it to the house. First the goal at the three, and stepping in is Masoli on the keeper. Nothing fancy, get the job done, and with the conversion, this will be a 10-point game once again. <laughs> what a game. <laughs> and Stanford is scoring points with Oregon, and this Oregon offense, they've not been absolutely themselves, but a great fake again. Everybody commits to Barner, and Masoli sees the hole on the outside. Perfect read option run. It is up and good in the seven minutes and four seconds remaining in the third quarter. It's Stanford 38, Oregon 28. Incidentally, the last time Stanford beat Oregon was up in Eugene in 2001. The score of that game was 49 to 42. Here's a Lusu. Hits the gap, bounces it outside in the 30. Stutter step and is surrounded by about the 33 yard line. Marvin Johnson, first man to him, and it has been the Chris Owusu show. Well, here's the opening kick of the game, and Owusu just flying right down the numbers. He looks his best when he keeps those legs going, and then catching the ball brilliantly from his quarterback, Andrew Luck. He's been well covered all afternoon, but that hasn't stopped him, and there you see the great adjustment on the last touchdown for the Cardinal. Chris Owusu really having a big day. So here we go again, first down at the 32-yard line, they remain in the gun. The give is to Gerhardt, Gerhardt is about five, maybe six yards on first down. That's the goal, as we've mentioned on several occasions. Now, Morgan moving around a lot defensively. Give it to Gerhardt again. Gerhardt, first down and more, busted in the secondary, and is stopped on a nice open field tackle at the 49-yard line. John Boyette. Boyette played great last week against SC. Hasn't missed a beat here, Mr. Freshman. John Boyette plays very angry, and you see T.J. Ward coming off the edge there on the run blitz. That doesn't help, though, because Toby Gerhardt gets into the line of scrimmage so quickly. If Toby Gerhardt breaks the tackle of John Boyette, he's going to the house because the other safety, Ward, was flying up the field. John Boyette, 5'10", 190 pounds. Redshirt freshman, but plays a lot bigger than that. That man out of Napa, California. Napa High School. Stephon Taylor in the backfield now for the Cardinal. First down to short of midfield. This is Taylor trying to cut it back. Saw a lot of green, but stopped before he got there by Spencer Pacing. That's showing blitz here. And they back out of it. Three-man rush. Luck throws over the middle. He's got a man, Owusu, who is cracked.
Good job by Talman Jackson that time, and he allowed a lot of help from his friends, and Jackson is going to be a little this slow position that the Ducks can ill afford any more injuries. And you can see from the tape a real bang-bang play, a great look at it. There it is in real speed. That went down hard, Stanford, right in midfield. Jackson up on his feet and appears to be okay. Well, Barry, I've got to tell you that that last long run by LaMichael James matches the mood of the Oregon defense. I've been checking these guys out throughout the whole quarter, and there are zero signs of fatigue. In fact, talking to Chip Kelly, he says that of every team he's coached, this team works harder. They work until they're blue in the face. They're playing like it's easy right now. There's a mood of determination. These guys believe they can get right back into this ball game, Barry. Well, they are very much in the game. There's no question about it. Ten-point game. Stanford now looking at a third down and nine. Long, long way to go. This game is nowhere near over. The Oregon defense used to play in a lot of plays. Happened against Boise, happened against Purdue, and happened against Utah. Straight back. Goes luck. Steps up. Throws. A loose has it at the 35-yard line. First down, Cardinal, 15 yards, and another big play by Andrew. Well, that time, with Talmadge Jackson out of the game, John Boyette one-on-one -on -one against Uwusu, and the Cardinal able to exploit that. Boyette giving Uwusu a big cushion, and why not? Uwusu's a lot faster than him, and a great throw by Andrew Luck getting it out there. Pretty easy throw and catch for the Cardinal. Give it up for the O-line for Stanford, too. Luck had all day. That was a rather slow developing play. And it all starts with their run game. Toby Gerhardt now broken his same single season rushing record of 1,139 yards in the set last year. Still Stephon Taylor, though. This is Taylor, steps out the first tackle, puts his head down, gets a couple of yards. There's Daphne right here. All three backs in the game right now. First time they've lined up in this alignment. Play fake, Luck's gonna throw. Now he steps up, does throw, catch made, first down. Stefan Taylor on the receiving end of a 16-yard line. And once again, that was a little bit out of the Jeremiah Masoli playbook. Really coming under control was Luck sprinting out to the sideline. It really looks like he's going to tuck it. He's got all three tailbacks in the game in what they call a bone formation. Gets the Oregon defenders to commit, drops it in, just like Masoli did to Michael James. That time he drops it in to Stephen Taylor, a huge recruit out of Mansfield, Texas, a true freshman. First down, Stanford at the 17-yard line, now in the power eye. Gerhardt, right side, breaks a tackle at the 10, at the 5, touchdown, Cardinals! Not the power play. Chase Beeler at center, Andrew Phillips once again pulling around. Gerhardt's going to get right underneath number 71, you see that? And it just doesn't look like Oregon has the desire <laughs> late in the third quarter now to bring down Toby Gerhardt. He took John Boyette for a ride. Sure not going to bring him down with arm tackles, and there were about three of them on that play. Try for point to add the 45th point by the Stanford Cardinal, and this is falling into that category of who the fuck. Mark's numbers, unbelievable. Hat trick, touchdowns, still in the third quarter, 28 <laughs> Well, in Stanford's five wins, they average 246 yards rushing. In their three losses, they average 138 yards rushing. Right now, they're just short of the 200-yard mark, and they lead by 17. Here's Barnett with a 10, 15, 20. Slowed from behind, and then stopped at the 24-yard line. And again, a good special teams play by the Cardinals. Well, here we go. Watch Andrew Phillips come and pull around, and Toby Gerhardt get in and then outside to the end zone. Watch the puller and watch Toby get right up underneath him, and there you see the hole. It's there, and then it opens up to the outside for Toby Gerhardt. Just a brilliant piece of running and a brilliant piece of blocking and a play that Stanford runs to perfection. As well as Stanford runs the power, that's as well as Oregon runs that lead option play. And right now, Stanford's getting the best of it. 28 carries, and we're still in the third quarter for Gerhardt. Oregon starts at 25. Here's Holland on a reverse. Holland trying to get to the outside. He's got a lot of speed. Stutter steps and then he's dragged down as he crossed the 40-yard line. A good first down yardage pickup of 18. Started his college career at USC. Took it a long time to adapt to this Oregon system. And it's still a learning process for him. This is James right side. 
James will pick up about five, maybe six. And Michael James, you can see, he's improved his personal best each of the last three games prior to this. Got a ways to go in this one. There he is again. Maybe close to first down. They're loaded at the skill positions when it comes to running backs at Oregon. Parker's in the ball game too. He now comes in motion. Masoli on the keep, wrapped up. Nice play to stay on that time. By Thomas Kaiser. Stanford beats plays like that if they're going to hang on and beat this powerful Oregon offense. Remember, Oregon's still got to play Oregon State. They still have to play Arizona. They're in a good position for that BCS bid in the Pac-10, even with the loss here. Here's James this time. James keeps the feet moving and pushes the pile a little bit. He got something out of nothing. Barner comes into the ballgame. James leaves. Barner, remember, playing on Fresh Lakes here. And they don't drop off a whole lot with Barner in the back. This is Barner. Barner's going to be short of the first down by about three yards. That's kind of decision time here for Chip Kelly. I believe he'll go for it here. That's why they called the read option play on third down, just to get a good chunk of the yardage they needed. And they're still on the field on fourth down. Probably going to run the read option again. Stanford's got the power play. Morton's got the read option. So here we go. Fourth down. They need three. And they give it to Barner. A right of a solely, and he's stopped. And Stanford will take over. Huge play. That time, Masoli made the wrong read, kept the ball, and has dropped for about a three-yard loss. you got to give all the credit to the Stanford defensive coordinator, Ron Lynn. Sending Michael Thomas on a run blitz. Michael Thomas found himself in the backfield, and he had an option to take out the running back for Masoli. Masoli keeps the ball. Thomas gets it. Great play. Defensive play of the game for the Cardinals. Now we're set to go. With Gerhardt in motion. Up in the backfield. Play fake. Luck going up. He's got all day to throw it. He airs it out deep. He's looking for a loose. He overthrows that second out of 10 ball at the 40 yard line. Gearhart, flag down. Gearhart gets to midfield. Gain of five. We'll see about the flag. Offsides. Defense. Five yard penalty. Main second down. Little penalties like that. Don't seem like a huge deal. They don't seem like game changers, but they can really hurt you. And Oregon's had a lot of penalties so far. They have nine to Stanford's three. Gerhardt again. Gerhardt busted. He gets it down about the 46. Pushed down Cardinal. This is the time for him to shine. His work is not done. He's got to run this clock for his team. There's that power eye formation. That's the formation he scored the touchdown on. Give it to Gerhardt again. Gerhardt breaks a 40 35. Taking people with it down to the 30 yard. And Gerhardt with that run has gone over the 200 yard mark. Well, he's having a career day. And he is carrying his football team along with that offensive line. That time pulling around David DeCastro with a really strong block. Andrew Phillips has been great pulling all afternoon as well. He's making a case for all Pac-10. So is DeCastro with this Stanford offensive line. And Oregon, as good as they are defensively and as resilient as they have been all year and as great of a job as they've done, they are really wearing down. These guys are tired of tackling Toby Gerhardt. We've been talking about the running backs, of course, coming up after we get out of Dodge. You'll see Jackers Rogers. You'll see John Mess. You'll see Shane Marine. And now you're looking at Taylor. Taylor will get good first down yardage. He picks up nine on the first snap. First half. We saw Stanford line up, and you'd think they're just going to take a knee because there was 17 seconds or so left on the clock. What did they do? They ran power. They're continuing to lean on this Oregon defense kind of like body punches in a boxing match. And you see the effects of it right now in the fourth quarter. Big push by the Stanford offensive line. Big yards for the Stanford backs, especially Gerhardt. They have it at the 22-yard line. Taylor remains the tailback. Give it to the fullback this time. Four of seven on third downs are on the Cardinal in this game so far. Gerhardt back with Gerhardt back in the ball game. Luck rolls to his right. Now he steps up. Now he's going to run. And he's going to be stopped short. Of course, that's a good shot from Kiko Alonso. 
Already made one from 29. Nate Whitaker, the kicker. Not a big guy, 5'9". Snap placed on its way. Plenty of distance. Looks good. Is good. And the Cardinal lead it 48 to 28. Oregon will have the ball. The clock is now the ally of Stanford. We're coming back. Barner at the one-yard line. Back up the gut and just dropped short of the 20 yard line. And again, you really got to give it up for what Stanford is doing on the defensive end on special teams. Well, they've been covering well. Solid play, but look at Toby Gerhardt's day. Just a ridiculous display of power, balance, speed, skill, blocking up front. Now, Darren Nelson's got 4,033 career rushing yards. That's a record at Stanford. Toby would need to play the 2010 season to approach that mark, but he's having one of the best days I've ever seen a running back have as far as endurance and durability and ball security. Even though he had the fumble in the first half, that was more of a fluke fumble. A great play by T.J. Ward putting his helmet on the ball, but right now Stanford taking the number eight team in the country to the wall. I'll say they are. Oregon now Solely rolls one way, has to throw across his body, does, and misses everybody. Because of Stanford's offense, possessing the ball the way they have, it's really given their defense an opportunity to move around, get some rest, play with some tempo, and just try their best to keep up with Oregon. Most telling stat the game, other than the score, time of possession is 34 to 15 for Stanford. James has stopped after a game of three. It's going to be third and long once again. But you see what they can do when they play together. Third and long. Soli with time throws underneath to James. And James reaching for the first down. And it will depend on the... It is short. It will really bring about an interesting decision for Chip Kelly. Well, let's see. I think you're going to see him step out of bounds here. Yeah, right, right there. there. And that is short. They call it a first down. Now let's see what Harbaugh does here. Jim Harbaugh was right there. He had a great look at it himself, and he was pointing to the foot and the sideline to all the officials. Let's see if he decides to challenge it. Great effort by James to get the first down stretching out. And I think he is going to challenge it. And the entire Stanford coaching staff running over. Watch Jim Harbaugh right here. Watch him get animated when he sees that foot go out of bounds. Oh, he's, he's definitely got an argument. Absolutely. They're right. trying to find After the review, spot. After review, it was determined that the runner went out of bounds at the 28 and a half yard line. Therefore, to be fourth down with a half a yard to go. There he is right here. Let's see if they bring him again. This is actually almost a full yard where the ball is spotted. Big play, play of the game for Oregon. They gave it to James. I don't know, I think he got it. So it's a first down at the 30-yard line. 9.47 remaining. Stanford leads it by 20. Holland comes in motion. So they're going to throw. Throws to Holland. Holland dropped it. He had plenty of room. Tough situation coming out of the shadow to the sun. And I thought Masoli recognized Holland a little late being open. He's open then, and it takes about an extra half second for Masoli to get the ball out there, and coming out of the shadows into that such very difficult time of day to make that catch. It's the only part of the stadium that has any kind of sun right now. There's a quick pass, and this one was dropped by Dixon. Dixon's had a tough game. Same situation, too, coming out of the shadows into the sun. That's 4 of 11 in third down conversions. Not as high a percentage as they usually have. Masoli straight back. Now a roll away from pressure. Now he throws downfield, got a man caught by Paulson. First down, Stanford 45-yard line, and a nice job to hang on by the tight end, David Paulson, a game of 25. And that's the other Oregon tight end who's having a pretty good year, a breakout season, in fact, for David Paulson. High school quarterback at Auburn, Washington, Riverside High School, and he's a good player. First catch of the game for Paulson. Oregon hustles to the line of scrimmage, ready to get another playoff. Masoli this time steps up, throws wide open, James down the sideline, and he dropped the football.
football. That was going to be a touchdown. Frustration from Chip Kelly. Frustration from Jeremiah Masoli. Again, LaMichael James, just a true freshman, gets lost on the wheel route. Richard Sherman loses him. It's his responsibility to get out there and make the play. Michael James had nothing but six points. Couldn't hang on. Second down, pump fake this time. Masoli rolls to his right, throws back across the grain. Catch made by Dixon. That's a first down inside the 30 of the 28-yard line. Soli lays it out there perfectly, puts good touch on the ball. You have to do that when you got a running back out there. They're not used to catching the ball downfield. Puts it right one foot in front of the numbers for Michael James. Michael James, a great freshman player, just can't make the play. Ducks right back with the first down. Here comes a blitz, and the pass is caught by Barnard. Tempo from Oregon. Soli quickly now. Steps up, throws a drag pattern for Mayo, makes the catch. Gets around him at the 15, to the 10, to the 5. Close to the touchdown, but they're going to mark it at about the two-yard line. You see Stanford again just hanging on defensively. The tempo from Oregon and the rhythm really getting work, and we've seen it in, in, we've seen it in spurts. And this game coming on the drive route was Mail. Masoli finds it with the tempo, and he does a good job trying to pick his way to the end zone. Stanford's only got 10 men on the field right now. And to give the Barner touchdown. Well, and that's what the tempo does to you. Really puts you out of sorts. 48 to 34 ball game now. Plenty of time left. Enough time that Stanford cannot try to sit on this lead. 8.05 remaining in the game. Back to a 13-point game. It's 48 to 35. Stanford, they'll have it when we come back. At the 46-yard line. Well, Mary, you had it. There's only 10 guys on the field on that touchdown play. Seven, eight, nine, 10. Only 10 Stanford Cardinals out there. And that's not going to do it. <laughs> you no. need 11 guys You're out there. You're short there every time. You need 11 Stanford Cardinal out there to try to stop that run. And they still had a good chance to stop Barner on the touchdown. But too much confusion. And that's what Oregon does with their tempo offensively. But that line drive kick to Owusu really put Stanford in a good position going forward here. 42-yard return by Awusu, who's run up huge yardage today. Here's Gerhardt once again. Gerhardt gets it going. Second down and five. Gerhardt again. Gerhardt not much this time. Might have gotten two. This is a really big third down. The numbers on Gerhardt. Right now, the fourth all-time single-game rushing mark, 208. See if the Cardinal keep their attitude here and continue to run the ball. This looks like a passing formation. Two tight ends. They bring Marisic up on the wing to the right side. And this is a keeper by Luck. And Luck, I don't think he's going to get there. He's going to be stopped by a half yard short. He's going to go. They're bringing in their extra offensive linemen. They're going to go with seven offensive linemen, which kind of makes them the antithesis of the spread. They're going to try to get a push here. Oregon is challenging the ruling on the field as with respect to the spot. Well, it's interesting because what this is doing actually is it's After giving... Five minutes and 48 seconds. Giving both five, Luck four, and Gerhardt an extra blow here. I think both of them, quite honestly, are a little bit gassed. There you see Luck. It seems to be a fairly accurate... Well, it's understandable what Chip Kelly's doing. He's set up for a big fourth down here against a team that's really been pounding his defense all afternoon. After further review, the rolling on the field is confirmed. Therefore, there'll be a charge timeout to Oregon. That'll be their first charge timeout, and they will be—they will have no further challenges in the game. That's a uh, that's a tough timeout to lose because they they trail right now by 13. There's 5:48 left. They need two scores. And even though they play fast, they may need that time. Power formation. Now they bring Dre in motion to the near side. And they give it to Gerhardt. He's got it in the middle. Down about the 33 yard line. Now it's fancy just what they've been doing all day. They just ran their power play. Gerhardt again, slow to get up. Give this to Taylor. And Taylor is better at the line of scrimmage, maybe not a yard. Put on a better performance than the guy we're watching right here. Here's Toby Gerhardt again. Bounce it to the outside, inside the 30. 
to about the 27-yard line. He thought he had more at that time. Stanford using the clock really well, though. Let it run down here. They call a timeout with 3.41 remaining. 48 to 35, they have the ball. Third down and a long five. And they give it to Gerhardt, and Gerhardt couldn't bounce off that tackle. He stopped at about the 27-yard line. That's the Oregon second timeout. Third timeout, they've not used all their timeouts. It's gonna be a 40, almost 45 yards. Navy's got Charlie Weiss twice now. That's right. This one on its way. Does it have the direction? It does not. Whitaker pulled this one off to the right side. Never did come back, and that gives Chip Kelly a glimmer of Oregon, which we know can score quickly with the football. Masoli steps up, throws, James makes the catch. Stutter step, makes a man miss, midfield 45, out of bounds to 42 yards. Not on the edge in the last series for the Ducks. Here's Masoli, back to pass. Avoided a tackle, avoids another, and now he gets something out of nothing and steps out of bounds. And only 22 seconds has come off the clock. Well, we've talked about all of these yards of offense for both teams. These defenses are both running on fumes. Masoli straight back, no pressure. Mayo makes the catch and then runs directly into Michael Thomas. Still a gain of about six yards. He was waiting that time for the for the drive round. Michael Thomas with a textbook tackle on Jeff Mayo. Masoli again. Masoli throws wide open. James misses it again. Down on the ground, holding on to his shoulder. Well, here he is. On the opposite sideline from the first drop he had, and that looked like he could get it, and then he goes down. I didn't see where he hurt his shoulder there. No. There's the other drop from the last series, but Oregon did go on to score a touchdown, but time is also against the Ducks. And here's LaMichael James. I think he'll be up and, and moving. Well, the end result of all of this is it's a third and five. You know, it's hard for running backs to raise their arms up in the passing game because they wear bigger pads, but those were two catchable balls for James. It sure looked like it. Got his hands on both of them. Soli straight back. Little slant for Davis. He's got room for the 10. He's going to get in. Five. Touchdown, Oregon. And it did not take long. Yeah, and they all just had a tail break there with the screen. Look at all the Stanford defenders flying into the backfield. Oregon does a great job getting their guys offensive line-wise. Jordan Holmes out there to make the blocks. And D.J. Davis, pretty nice path to the end zone. Well-orchestrated drive by Jeremiah Masoli. And the drop again by LeMichael James doesn't hurt the Ducks too much. No, it doesn't. Try for point is up a good 74 yards. And it only took 54 seconds. They don't have any timeouts left, but there's 2 minutes and 38 seconds left. Ostensibly, if Oregon gets a stop, they can get the ball back and be in a position where they can move it a little bit. And nice blocking downfield. USC, but they're coming on now. Big BCS implications in this game if Oregon goes down to Stanford, but they have a shot. Well, they do clearly have a shot now. Remember the last time, we mentioned this earlier, the last time Stanford defeated Oregon was up in Eugene back in 2001. Oregon was ranked number five in the country, and Stanford won it. 49 to 42 right now 48 to 42 with 238 remaining well stanford can end this game with a few first downs with the power running game that they've had and oregon better be careful because we know that andrew luck can get involved in the play action and really hurt him with a ball down the field stanford anticipating an onside kick they got the hands team out Oregon bunching six players to the near side of the field right now. Two more, three more behind the kicker, and then only one player to the far side of the field. So they certainly are showing onside kick. And they do the onside kick. It's not going to go to 10 yards. And Stanford will fall. They have it at the 38-yard line. Gerhardt, the tailback. This is Gerhardt. Gerhardt pushes the pile to about 35. He'll get three. No matter what happens in this game, you've got to take your hat off to Stanford's defense. They made some great plays when they had to against what is the highest octane offense I've ever seen in Chip Kelly's Oregon offense. They look a lot like they did in 2007 when Dennis Dixon had it going and Mike Bellotti was the head coach before Dixon got hurt against Arizona. They are just absolutely unstoppable. 
We've had 1,071 yards of offense in this game. I'll tell you about it in a minute. Gerhardt spins out of one tackle, gets down about the 32 yard line. Look at all the yards we've seen today, just talking about it. Just two great offensive performances by two great, very vastly different offenses. And we've really seen the best of both worlds the best of the power running game and play action when it comes to Stanford, and the best of the spread world when it comes to Chip Kelly and what he can do with Jeremiah Masoli. And with that run, Toby Gerhardt becomes the single game all time leader at Stanford. He's got 222 yards. That breaks the record of 220 yards set by John Holby back in 1988. And he earned every one of them, I'll tell you that. Big play right here, third down and five, a minute and three seconds. Stanford needs a first down to put this one in the back. They give it to Gerhardt, it's not gonna make it. Now they could fake this also. Well, we got 15 seconds to tell us the story. It's snapped, it's placed, it's kicked, it's on its way. It is good! And that's gonna do it. A gutsy call, I think, by Jim Harbaugh. Very gutsy. Isn't that interesting? We talked to him yesterday. I thought they might pooch out of that field goal formation. We talked to him yesterday about the range of his kick where he said, I'm comfortable 50, 51, 52. Whitaker came through that time, missed one, but made up for it. Big celebration on the Stanford sideline. Oregon, they came back and fought hard in this football game. They're dejected. There you see Nate Whitaker, the junior, San Diego, California, St. Augustine High School. Numerous heroes here today, numerous heroes. Toby Gerhardt, the offensive line, Andrew Luck. You see Jim Harbaugh, the celebration on the sideline. This is the biggest win in the Harbaugh era. Here's a guy that loves his players, and he knocked off USC. The biggest win in the Harbaugh era in this decade was the 2007 victory at USC, 24 to 23. It was amazing as a 42-point underdog. This guy's building a resume of giant wins. This will go down as a program-changing win because the Cardinal just knocked off America's hottest team, and now they will be bowl eligible. Congratulations, Stanford. All you have to do is play USC next week. And you know what? I mean, when you just look at matchups, Stanford matches up pretty well with USC. I honestly, going into this game, I thought the USC matchup, because we're going to be seeing that game too, was a better matchup for Stanford than this game was. Meantime, Barner stays on his feet to the 40 yard line, and the clock with that will stop in four seconds. They're able to pull the reins back on that Oregon offense, and really what they were able to do was pound the football, like we talked about in the open. Hold the football, time of possession, keep Masoli on the sideline. So Masoli, they just throw it, well, he throws it underneath, and it's brought by Mayo, and that's going to be the game, and the Stanford student body, what there is of it here, will come out of the field in celebration, and uh, it's a good cause to celebrate. I mean, as we said, numerous heroes. Andrew Luck, that guy right there, Toby Gerhardt, best single game rushing performance in history here at Stanford. You've got to give it up to the offensive line. Consistent this entire game long. And how about Ron Leonard's defense? I know you look at the number. You put 42 on the board. You gave up almost 600 yards. Just incredibly exciting about down here. The smash mouth that your team delivered today was outstanding. What can you say about this win? Just really proud of my players. Really proud of the way they played. And the coaches, they did a great job. Great character, great integrity by our football team. When you look at Oregon last week, they beat USC today. You beat them. What can you say about the Pac-10 conference? Well, I mean, it's, it's the best conference in, uh, in college football. But you know, I think our, our football team expressed who we are today. And that's what I'm really proud about. Thanks, Coach. Very back to you. All right. Thanks very much, Rebecca. Very excited, Jim Harbaugh. And with very good reason, we started to say you got to give it up for Ronlin. Even though you look at big numbers, they made plays when they had to make plays. That was what was important. Uh, the blitz on fourth down especially was a game changer. That was the defensive play of the game for Stanford. Fantastic. All right. So that's a wrap for us. Stanford wins it 51 to 42.